Alright, hey guys, what's up? Welcome to part 3 of this um, tutorial series. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And what we're going to do now is we just um, declared what the timer is equal to. So now we have to start the timer. So I can start. Simple enough. And now, interestingly now, we have to make it so the start button cannot be enabled so we want it to be disabled so they can't click it because keep in mind they've just clicked the start button so they've clicked it once we don't want them to do this one time in the like while they're playing because if they click it again it would just mess up the whole program so to do that you just type in start button set enabled false and then now remember up here um where was that uh it was somewhere right here click button set enabled false when we first started it, we had the click button not enabled, so now we need to enable it so they can actually do their clicking. So, click button set enabled true. Got it? Alright, now find where your try block ends, which is right here, and type in catch number format exception, and it's called ex. And then, what are we going to say if they have a number format exception? Well, we'll set the text field and we'll say numbers only all right so simple enough so done with this song class that was 20 lines of code so now we got to do our click button class so what happens when they actually click the button which they're going to do repeatedly probably about five to six times a second depending on how fast they can click so click button class um, let's see implements action center Oh my god, I'm done. <laughs> oh, class. All right. Um, and then ah, uh, what did I call this? Click button class. Public void. Duh. All right. So what do we want to happen? Well, this one's actually pretty simple. All we want to do is increment click counter which is a variable that we declared um, up here and I think do we declare it to zero um, I don't know but anyways it starts at zero so it's just gonna go up from zero up 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 however many times they click this button remember they can only click the start button once during the cycle of the program but they click this button up to like maybe five or six times a second depending on how fast they can click um, so, and then we just want to update the label to, so they can see how many t times they've clicked. So, click label, set text, and then clicks, and just say plus click counter. Alright, so done with that one. That's pretty simple. Now we're going to do our time class. And this is going to be almost identical to our last series, um, where we made it like a simple countdown timer. So I'm not going to go through this too in-depth. Um. <sighs> Alright, now remember we have to actually make an int right away and call it, ah, oh, it's called timer counter. And then we actually have an, we have to have a constructor so we can set our timer counter equal to our timer counter, which makes no sense at all, but you got to do it. Yeah, and I screwed up up here. I forgot. We have to actually pass something into this constructor and call it time count. Like that, and that's gave us an error because we haven't made this constructor yet. So, public time class, and then in here we put in um, int timer counter. And you don't really have to understand what this is doing. It's just setting. It's just making the timer know like what number to start counting down from. So. Um, type in this timer counter is equal to timer counter. Yeah, it's pretty confusing, but whatever. And then public void action performed. All 
All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is decrement timer counter, and then just a couple if statement, if else statement. So if um, let's see if timer counter is greater than or equal to one, we want to um, set our time left label to say whatever time they have left. So and we're gonna have it say time left. Else, that means they're done. So they have finished the program. Um, stop the timer. Um, set the label to say done. Um, disable the click button so they cannot click anymore. So click button set enabled. And at this point, all of our buttons are going to be disabled, so that's why I built in a reset feature so we can like, reset the game. And this is optional, I suppose, but just make a little beeping sound. There we go. And, all right. Um, I mean, this is pretty self explanatory. We just did this thing so it knows what to start at. We decrement that, and if it's above one, that means they have time left. We say, or else they're done. Stop the timer. Say done. Um, just click. Make the button fall so they, they they're done so they can't click the button anymore, and then make a little emit a beeping sound. So, <sighs> um, yeah. All right. Now, let's do our reset class, and then we see our exit class, and finally, 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 our main method. So, see, this is a pretty long program. Um, public class reset class. Alright, now, what do we want to do in here? Well, we want to, just like we when we launched the program, the click button was false. So when we click the reset, we want to make it almost look like as if we just started the program. So, click button, false, whoa, set enabled, false. And then we just, um, our click button, our start button, we need it to be true, because remember up here, somewhere, Somewhere right here, we made it false, so we need to make it back to true. So start button set enable true. All right, and then reset our click counter to zero. Um, and just reset our labels and our text field to what they originally were. So our click label originally said it originally said clicks zero. And our text field had nothing in it, so see nothing. And time left originally said um, time left question mark. That's what it originally said when we first um, made the program. And then uh, I'm gonna save a little time and just do this. Call it exit class, and this was exit class and. All I'm gonna do for the exit class is pretty easy, just system exit zero. Alright. Um maybe I can do the main method like voids. If I can even get the correct order, public string args. Um yeah, I'm just gonna wait until the next tutorial to do this. I think I'll go over this a little bit better. So what we did for the reset class was when we click it we want to make it almost look like we just opened the program so have it so our click button is false um, our start button has to be true because we enabled we set it to false right here um, and then we gotta do yeah <laughs> we gotta reset our labels what they were so our click label originally said clicks zero and our time left said question mark. Our text field originally was nothing and in case they trip the error or something we have to set it to nothing. And then click counter and we just gotta reset it to zero so it can start from zero back up to like however many they can get in their specified time. So anyways tune in for part four and we'll finally finish this thing and get to see how it works.